Welcome back everyone, my name is Joel Feld and today we're going to discuss contacts. How to create them, create groups, and all that good stuff. So, let's get started. Depending on what device you are on, the concept of creating a contact will be very, very similar but also depending on the device that you're on, you may or may not be able to create what you want to create. Nowadays, when you add an email account to a device like your iPhone or iPad or the computer, your email account provides much, much more than just your email. It provides other information like contacts, calendars, notes, reminders, and each email account can have its own contact book or its own set of notes or its own calendars. And the thing before we even get started is you have to know that your contacts aren't necessarily on the device that you create them on. So for example, when I create a contact on my Mac computer, it doesn't mean that that contact is stored on this computer. You have access to it on this computer, but it really depends on what account or where you're actually creating it. And that'll make a little bit more sense here once we kind of dive deep into the settings. So let's start off on the Mac and create a simple contact. So I'm gonna go to the Contacts app and on the left here, I have multiple accounts. So when I look at my Mac here and I'm in Contacts, if I go up to Contacts and choose Preferences, I can see that under the accounts tab here, I actually have an account with iCloud. I have an account with Outlook or Microsoft Exchange. I have a Google account. I have a Yahoo account and I have an AOL account. I have all of these different accounts that give me the ability to synchronize five different address books. So when I'm adding a contact in here, it could be only going to iCloud. It could be only going to Microsoft. It could be only going to Yahoo. And so if I look back under the general tab, down at the bottom, we have this option that says default account. And right now mine is set to iCloud because that's where I usually use 100% of all my contacts. So when I create a new contact, it's automatically going onto iCloud and it's not gonna show up in gmail.com or aol.com or yahoo, anything like that. Let's dive in. We're gonna leave the preferences open here because we're gonna come back to that. And if I wanna create a brand new contact, I can do it a couple different ways. I can go up to the file menu and choose new card. And it gives me all of this information to enter in based off of the person or the contact card that I'm adding into the address book. Now we're gonna, we're gonna create some fake people here. I like the TV show, The Simpsons. So we're gonna kind of uh, use them as a little bit of inspiration. So we're gonna go with Bart Sampson and uh, we'll type in a telephone number, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, zero, something like that. Uh, add another number in there. We'll give them an email address just for fun, bartman at something.com. And again, I could go through all of the different information, uh, assign a ringtone, if they have a website, I can assign a birthday, a, a social media account, and I have no idea what some of these are. God do, God do. Anyways, uh, you, you kind of get the point. Um, here I'm able to enter all of the information that is associated with this particular individual. If I want to even put a picture, I can click the plus sign here and I can choose from the defaults that Apple gives me. I can upload and do a camera picture right here. I could go to the photos that I have linked on my photos library, or if I have uh, just a, a picture anywhere, I can actually just drag a photograph and bring this right onto the contact and it's going to add that picture right there for me and I can do save. And then in the bottom right, I'll go ahead and choose done and now that contact is there. And because that contact is there, if I go to my iPad, notice it automatically shows up here because it's synchronizing to the cloud. That contact is associated with my iCloud and in return it's on my iPad. But let's create another one here. We'll do new contact. Let's do Homer next. Homer Samson. I'll give him my phone number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Just random digits. That's definitely way too many digits. Delete. We'll give him an email address of Homer at something.com. Or actually we'll do Doe. 
like that. We have a picture for Homer as well. We'll throw that in there because who doesn't love donuts? We're gonna go through and create a handful of other contacts. Let's actually go out to iCloud and create them. So if I open up Safari, I can actually go out to, well, I'm at iCloud.com, but if we sign in again here, I can go to contacts and here is Bart and here is Homer because I created them again within that iCloud environment. If I click the plus sign down in the bottom left, I can choose new contact. We'll do Marge, Samson, and I could just choose done here and I could pick up where I left off down here on contacts. Notice it's already there, that's how quick it is. So I can come back and minimize that. We could bring Marge's hair there, save, we'll do edit. And we can add a telephone number for her as well. And we'll do big blue at something.com. Choose done. And there we go. So now I'm going to come to my iPad. If I want to create and add someone from my iPad, there's a little plus sign in the top center there. I can touch that. And this is where I could type in Maggie Sampson and add a phone number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, zero, zero, something like that. We'll do add an email. We'll just do maggie.sampson at something.com and choose done. So that's going to be created on my iPad. And in return, notice it just showed up on my computer. And I can always edit and it will reflect everywhere else. So we'll drag in a a photograph. I like having pictures for my contacts. I just, you know, it's fun. Why not? Just because uh, you can. That way when I'm going on my iPad here, I see nice little pictures of everyone. And Maggie will get her pacifier here soon. And so let's create another one. We'll finish off the, uh, the family here. We're going to do Lisa Sampson. We're going to throw in a picture. Save. Again. We'll do sax, um, uh, phone at something.com. Too many characters for the number. All right, we'll choose done. So now we have all of these families here. Now the other thing to look at with the contacts when you're creating them on your iPhone or iPad is underneath the settings, scroll down and go to contacts. And you also want to make sure that your default account is set to really whatever account that you're primarily using for your contacts. There's no right or wrong answer. You can use iCloud, you can use Gmail, you can use AOL, you could use Yahoo. Actually, you might not be able to use AOL and we'll get that into a later video because if we go back to mail accounts, notice AOL, it doesn't even give me the option to synchronize contacts. So. Uh, number one, if you use AOL, it's probably time to not use AOL. Same thing with like Comcast, Xfinity, mail and notes. Don't use Comcast. Just time to time to get a new email. Time to rethink our email account. Long story short, back under contacts, this is where we see the accounts of what accounts actually turn on and have the ability to sync with contacts. We can sort our information for first name, last name, how it's displayed to us in the display order, same thing. Uh, short name, first name and last initial, last name and first initial. So you have a couple preferences in here that you can tweak and change also. Now, you can create contacts and then you can also create contact groups. And the thing is, you cannot create a contact group on an iPhone or iPad. Don't ask me why, but it's super annoying. You can't do it. So the best way to create a contact group is either from your computer on contacts, the app, or go out to iCloud and create a group there. So on the computer here, I can create a group by going up to file and do new group. And it's gonna create a new group under iCloud because that's my default account. So I could say Samson family. And then I could also go up to iCloud. I could go to Safari. We'll pull iCloud back up. If I go back to that plus sign in the bottom left, I can do new group from here as well. And we're going to do uh, tech giants because I'm going to add a few more contacts in. And notice it's pretty quick with the syncing and the synchronization of everything. So here's here pops up tech giants right here. And we're going to do we're going to do a company of Apple. And we'll throw in a 
put that there. She's done. We're gonna do another contact, new contact. Let's do a company. And the company just pretty much gets rid of the first and last name there for you. Uh, you can still put it in there, but it kind of just switches the order of those fields around. There's no right or wrong answer for that and a personal preference. Oh, let's see, my logos are a little bit off. That's okay. We're just gonna say save there. Do another one here, new contact, Google, put that in there, save, done. And we'll do one more for, you guessed it, Microsoft, Microsoft. And we'll throw a photograph for that one as well. There we go, save and done. So now, because I was selected on this Tech Giants group, it actually placed these contacts in there. If I go back to iCloud or all iCloud, all of those contacts are in this one giant big group. If I go to Samsung Family, no one's in there. So I wanna go back to all iCloud and I can drag these individuals in that group. And when I select that, now they're in there as well. So if I drag the rest of them, I can hold down command on the keyboard, select multiple and drag them all at once. Now here's a cool thing, a little side tip here for you. Let's say that Homer, if I drag him into Tech Giants also, when I have Homer selected, if I hold down option on the keyboard, notice how it illuminates the groups on the left-hand side. So this is telling me that Homer is in the group All iCloud, which he's part of that All group. He's also in Samson Family, and he's in the Tech Giants folder. If I hold down Option while holding Microsoft, notice it only illuminates Tech Giants and All iCloud. He's not in that Samson Family folder, or group, I should say. Do the same thing with Marge. She's in Samson, but not Tech Giants. Little uh, tip there, it's kind of helpful. I like it. So we've added all of these contacts. We've created two groups on the computer. If we go out to iCloud.com, notice these contacts are there. If I go to my iPad here, all of the contacts are also here. And if I touch groups in the top left, notice I have Samson Family and Tech Giants, and I have all of those contacts there as well. I'm not a huge fan of how the groups are done on the iPhone or iPad. They seem not as intuitive. For example, if I want to just see Samson Family, when I touch it, it just deselects it. So I actually have to touch it again and notice it only shows me those contacts there. If I touch Tech Giants and, and uncheck Samson Family, now I see the Tech Giants. So often, a lot of times, if you're on your iPhone or your iPad and you don't see all of your contacts, it could just be as simple as nothing is checked there because you're telling it not to show you those contacts. So if I go back to all iCloud, I will now see all of those contacts there available for me. Now, some other nice tricks on contacts are changing the template of how you create a new one. So when I go to the plus sign and do new contact, Notice how it has this kind of predefined template with all of these different fields in there. So I actually like to customize that to you know make it more user friendly and, and more what you're looking for with your contacts. And the way that you can do that is back in the preferences here for contacts, if you go to template at the top, you can actually change all of these different fields. So if you wanna add a work email, for example, we can click the plus sign and now we have a work one. Same thing with work phone, maybe. We can choose that to work. And we can customize all of these different kind of descriptions and headers. And if we go up to add field, we can even add things like anniversary dates or other dates. Or you can do a custom and say, you know, travel dates. I don't know why you do travel. Maybe wedding, we could do wedding. But I guess that would be an anniversary. Either or, you get the idea. You can add different fields based off of your personal preference, and you can pretty much just add these as a template so that they're always there. So now, if I go back to the plus sign and choose new contact, it's gonna have all of that additional fields for me to quickly enter in. I'm gonna choose done here, and notice I have these no-name contacts. I can just simply press delete on the keyboard, and it will then be deleted from the Mac, which will also be deleted from iCloud, which will also be deleted from my phone, my iPad, and every other device that I have. Now, notice over here, all of these contacts are purely living in iCloud because that's where I created them and that's where I'm syncing them from. If I go to my AOL account, 
my Exchange account, my Gmail account, my Yahoo account. There's no other contacts there except for the one that I have associated. But just because there's no contacts in here doesn't mean that I can't create them. So by highlighting Gmail, for example, or highlighting Microsoft Exchange, I can click the plus sign here, do new contact. We'll do just Joel Feld. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, something like that. We'll do joel.feld at something.com. We'll choose done there. And now this contact, because I was highlighted on the exchange account, I just created this account, not in iCloud, but I created it under the exchange. So if I go to that account on the website, which is Outlook, so if I refresh this and go to outlook.com, here is that contact. It's right in there in the cloud. It's got the email address and the telephone number that I put in there. If I go to my iPad here, I can go to groups in the top left. Let's turn off iCloud so I don't see that account anymore. If I touch all Outlook, here is that contact with that email address and that telephone number. If I edit on the iPad here, I could add another telephone number. One, add a bunch of nines you done and then that'll take a moment and once I refresh this web page here I should have another telephone number associated with this, this contact on outlook.com and if I click edit contact we'll see that home address right here and then let's go to contacts here and I could you know always add more stuff so let's add ABC one two three ABC road We'll do home address of Aurora, Minnesota, one, two, three, four, five. Choose done. So on my iPad, I can now go back to all iCloud and it's now showing me a combination of my iCloud account and my Outlook Exchange account. And if I go uncheck these, if I go to all Gmail, I have nothing on my, my Google Gmail. I have nothing on my Yahoo. So there's no contacts there. So overall, that's that's pretty much contacts. Understanding how the, the relationship of the synchronization happens from one account and one device from your iPhone or iPad or your Mac or uh, you know through the web browser. And it's uh, really just knowing where your contacts are at are extremely helpful because often I see contacts are over in this account and you have some contacts over here and it just becomes a mess. So. That's pretty much context. I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope you learned something. If you did, hit that subscribe button, tap that little bell, and we'll see you next time.